Okay, to start, I'm going to use one pound of lean turkey meat. Next, I'm also going to be using bell pepper here. I have mini bell peppers. Um, you can use regular size. This is just what I bought recently at my local supermarket. I'm also going to be using one shallot, three cloves of garlic. You can use a regular onion instead of the shallot. I'm just trying to use what I have in my refrigerator. I'm also adding, and this is optional, spring onion. Okay, so here I've just chopped up my bell pepper, shallot, and garlic, and now I'm going to saute them. Okay, so here I've taken my preheated skillet, I've added one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and now I'm just going to toss in all of my chopped peppers, onion, and garlic, and start the saute. I'm also going to add a pinch of kosher salt. This will help sweat out the vegetables. Now that the vegetables are nice and tender, I'm going to create a space in the pan and now I'm going to add the turkey meat. So now I'm just going to break up all of the ground meat and start mixing in the vegetables. But first I'm going to add some seasoning. I'm going to add a pinch of kosher salt and then some cracked pepper, but I have to do that off camera because I have one hand. So now that I added that, I'm just going to keep working in the ground meat and browning it. Okay, so now that it's nice and brown, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat and add in my chopped spring onion. You don't want to saute spring onion because it'll just wilt and overcook. And we still have to bake this, so. Okay, so I'm going to put all of my ground turkey aside in a different dish to cool off and now I'm going to work on my enchilada sauce. So here I have three tablespoons of vegetable oil in a heated skillet and now I'm going to add two and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I'm going to sprinkle it into the pan and work the flour into the oil and I'm just going to whisk whisk and whisk again to make sure I'm cooking out the raw flour taste. And I can't stress enough to you, when you're making an enchilada sauce, this is much like a gravy, you need to whisk because if you let it go and turn your head for just a second, it'll start clumping up on you. So this will ensure that you have a nice smooth sauce. So again, let's just whisk. Okay, so next I'm going to crumble in one chicken bouillon cube. And this will add the salt and I like to use bouillon cube because it adds, it gives a good umami flavor to whatever you're cooking with. Well, at least that's my opinion. But if you have chicken stock, you can just actually um, substitute the liquid for this sauce with chicken stock and during the flour process just add your salt and other spices and seasonings that you like. You can add uh, ground cumin, garlic, ground garlic, um, onion powder, um, but this is the way I like to make it. Okay, so moving on. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons 
of chili powder. And now again, I'm going to whisk it in, and as you can see, it's starting to get really clumpy, but you just wanna work that into your roux, which is our flour and oil uh, mixture. And you don't wanna cook this out much longer because then your spices and seasonings will start to burn. So I'm going to take two to two and a half cups of water and I'm going to add it slowly off camera because I only have uh, one free hand. So here is the water and again, I'm just gonna add it slowly and when I come back to you, you'll see what it looks like. So here it is. I've added all of the water and I added slowly because if you add it all at one time, you will end up with lumps. But this is the end result of adding all of the water and I'm just gonna start whisking out from the edges in because that seems to be where it's boiling the hottest and that's where it thickens and you just wanna work that into your sauce. And you're going to do this for about, uh, probably it took me five to eight minutes, uh, continual whisking. And once I find that the sauce is thickened, I take it off the heat and then we're ready to assemble our enchilada casserole. Okay, for this recipe, you can use a 9 by 13 inch uh, baking pan, but I'm going to be using my casserole corningware dish. This casserole dish is two and a half quarts, yes. So this is what I'll be using, uh, but you can use, again, the 9 by 13 baking dish. It'll work just fine. So here I have about 10 to 12 corn tortillas, and I've sliced them in half. And we are going to layer our enchilada casserole much like a lasagna. I also have two and a half cups of shredded Colby Jack cheese. You can use any cheese that you like. This is what I chose today. I think two and a half cups of cheese is good for this recipe. So I've taken my enchilada sauce and I've poured it into a measuring cup because it'll help you know, as I layer, as I go along layering the enchilada casserole. So now I'm just going to pour some of that into the dish to get things started here. And I'm going to spread it out with my wooden spoon. So <laughs> you can see this spoon is not working. So you know what? I am going to take a corn tortilla, boom, and spread it out. <laughs> so now I'm just going to place um, my corn tortillas all over the bottom to create the first layer. And you can do it nice and neat, but I've discovered just put them in there and if you have any spaces that need to be covered, you know what, just rip a piece of corn tortilla, see, and just put it in there, see? That's all you gotta do. So now I'm going to just take my clean hands and sprinkle the ground turkey mixture all over the bottom of the dish. And that's going to be a layer of meat and then a layer of cheese. And I'm going to do this three times. So another layer of corn tortillas. I'm going to just spread that all over. Then the ground meat, shredded cheese. For the last layer of tortillas, just place that in there. Okay, at this point, I should <laughs> have poured the rest of the enchilada sauce all over the top. Um, of the last layer of corn tortillas. So I did that off camera. So again, pour the rest of the enchilada sauce on the last layer of uh, corn tortillas. This would be the third layer. And then sprinkle the rest of the ground turkey, as you can see that I am doing that now. And then after that, just add the rest of your shredded cheese. And that will complete the layering process of this delicious casserole. So now I'm just going to cover 
the casserole with aluminum foil and bake in a preheated oven of 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes, then uncover and bake for an additional 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so you can see that it's been bubbling and browning the cheese on top, and this is ready to go. Now, the next important step of this is do not serve right away. You want to at least let the casserole cool and set for at least 20 minutes. Again, this step is important. Don't be impatient like I am sometimes and scald the roof of my mouth with oozing hot melty cheese. You want to let this set up because when you serve it and you let it cool and set, it's going to come out like a nice square piece of deliciousness. So, I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.